For the past three months, millions of employees around the world with the luxury to do so have been working from home. As we aim to return to normalcy, workers will undoubtedly be eager to go back to the office. I know I am. But the offices we go back to will look very different. Architects, innovators, health officials, and scientists are working together to redesign our office spaces to help keep workers safe. So what will that office look like? Well, let's redesign it together. In fact, let's redesign an office almost all of us are very familiar with. America's favorite office, Dunder Mifflin. At the end, we'll reveal the new and improved office layout designed specifically for a post-COVID-19 world. The office as we know it has seen many changes over the years. Although existing since the 1940s, open office plans really took off after the decline of the cubicle farm in the 1990s. More young people wanted to come work downtown. They realized there was a resurgence of interest in moving downtown. And that meant they had to pack people tighter. They started sort of moving them together and getting rid of the cubicles and suddenly everybody's working on big desks and the whole idea is they're cooperating and they're talking to each other. But today, open office plans pose serious risks in a post-COVID-19 world and are already being rethought. This is really an opportunity to fix what was already starting to kind of go awry. That people say they work best in open, open environments that have ample private spaces. So let's get started and redesign Dunder Mifflin piece by piece. Sneeze guards have been installed everywhere, from banks to grocery stores to fast food restaurants. But they soon could be coming to your office to create what may resemble a see-through cubicle. These physical barriers aim to keep germs spread low while not entirely reverting back to the almost universally despised cubicle layout. So what does this mean for Dunder Mifflin? Well, offices secluded away from others, namely Toby and Kelly, would be largely unaffected, whereas high traffic areas where Jim and Pam sit would be sectioned off via these plexiglass filters. You'll see Pam in her normal desk, but it, it's going to have a sneeze guard or some kind of a rant, you know, uh, barrier. Probably glasses, she can see you, but it still protects her. You're also going to see a floor boundary. So, you know, keep at a distance. We all have to maintain that six foot or more. In addition to adding physical barriers, some of the structural changes Dunder Mifflin could undergo would change its appearance closer to that of a hospital. Designers are currently advising employers to switch up materials in their offices, such as swapping wood for more sturdy materials that can withstand heavy cleaning, namely stone, laminates, and antimicrobial materials like cork and linoleum. This is a solid option for employers because it's relatively cheap. Designers and CEOs are also looking into a technology that's been used for years, but is only now gaining traction, UV technology. UV technology uses UVC rays. UVC is lethal enough to disarm bacteria and viruses by blasting them with 222 nanometers of ultraviolet wavelengths. UV light tech has been a mainstay for combating COVID-19 in hospitals, public transit, and other public spaces. So offices could also utilize this technology, whether that's by installing UV tech in the ventilation or by calling in cleaning services that utilize robot-like UV light machines. In a post-coronavirus world, hand washing will continue to be as important as ever, and offices will have to keep this in mind in their redesigns. Dunder Mifflin could incorporate a bigger emphasis on hand sanitizing and washing by outfitting reception with a sink and adding sinks to more common areas. Even a sink on wheels that freely moves around the office, though I'm sure Dwight would refuse to use it under the pretense of strengthening his immune system. The worst thing you can do for your immune system is to coddle it. They need to fight their own battle. This next one is definitely a more expensive option, the idea of a contactless space. This means no more communal buttons. Bluetooth and other similar tech would allow employees to use their phones or key fobs to do everything from open doors, use elevators, or even to get coffee. You walk up to the front door, it recognizes your face, it opens up, you go straight to the elevator, you don't even have to push a button because it knows that you're going up to the 14th floor because that's your first meeting of the day. The more we can start to integrate 
all of the technologies that are possible with a completely touchless experience, I think that's kind of the next generation of office building. The design firm Gensler came up with 10 ways offices would fundamentally change. One of these is a mudroom. Upon entry to the office, employees would wash their hands, change their shoes, and store their outerwear. There may be even floor markers with a one-way circulation throughout the office. You could take the existing files and start to divide down the middle to keep people from going into each other's areas. We fully envision that Angela is probably going to build some kind of a barrier around her desk because she is, is probably the most germaphobe of the whole cast. They need to start really thinking about their space differently. In the conference room, you're going to have to remove a number of the chairs in order to still maintain that physical distancing that we need. Well, if you remember, HR had high panels. Start to have an area for, for Kelly and Ryan, and they're going to be even more protected. That little hallway back in there is the perfect secluded spot for Toby. <laughs> because we all know Toby's work is extra sensitive and, and he really needs that privacy. So we've gone through the data, we've parsed together the different changes, and we've sent it off to our design analysts. They think we're just about ready to show off the new and improved post-coronavirus Dunder Mifflin. We've got everything here to keep America's favorite office running safely. We've got sneeze guards, a rolling sink by reception, some new materials to improve cleanliness, and even a mudroom. Now, in addition to structural changes around the office, designers and CEOs are looking at ways to further improve the health of their employees. Company leaders are considering the concept of health monitoring, AKA ensuring all employees are virus free. Sensors that would test employee temperatures could be placed around entryways. Similar sensors that monitor body temperature could be installed at employee desks. The monitors would show the first signs of fever and employees would be urged to go or stay home. But before any of this comes to fruition, self-regulation of one's health is the most preferable option since nobody wants to feel policed at work, especially not by the assistant to the regional manager. I don't want to have to deal with that. And that's why you have an assistant regional manager. Yes, it is. Assistant to the regional manager. Same thing. Another option would be to better encourage sick days for employees. It's not surprising that employees feel the pressure when debating to take a sick day. A limited number of days, missing out on work and pay, the list goes on. The technology is really going to change how people take their sick days, and I think people are going to be encouraged to take them. And finally, the option that's been glaring at us for the past couple of months, continue to work from home. COVID-19 has changed how and what it means to work, with many employers realizing that a work-from-home model can be successful. It raises the question, why change the office when working from home has been doing so well? It's providing, providing choice to be able to work from home some and come into the office when necessary. This may mean that some companies might move into smaller office spaces, using them for important meetings and the like, while having the majority of their workforce operate from home. Even after we have a vaccine, the changes and technologies we implement now will remain. A safety measure against future pandemics and a reminder of how quickly things can change. Thanks for watching. Would you rather continue working from home or go back to this newly redesigned office? Let us know in the comments. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and ring that bell so you can be alerted every time we release a new video.